All right, we're going on the trip, guys. See what we can find. Boom. They're probably just reading it. They're like, field trip? What the heck? Our opponent has to have the fear of the instant speed bajuga bog. They never know if we just have it in hand or not. Hello and welcome, everybody. Today, we are playing some academic amulet. Today, we've got a few things to learn, and hopefully by the end of this league, we will have schooled several opponents because we are playing field trip, three mana sorcery, search a library for a basic force card, put that card onto the battlefield tapped, and then shuffle, and then, of course, learn. This is a mechanic that lets us reveal a lesson card from our sideboard and put it into our hand, or allows us to discard a card and draw a card. So this obviously is just a three mana rampant growth for a basic forest. However, the power of this card comes in the ability to search for one of several lessons that we have in the sideboard, including Mascot Exhibition. This is a seven mana sorcery that makes a 2-1 white and black token, a 3-2 red and white token, and a 4-4 blue and red token. So a little bit of a board state here. We also have a basic conjuration, a three mana sorcery that lets us look at the top six cards of our library, reveal a creature from among them and put it into our hand and then put the rest on the bottom in a random order and then gain three life. We have containment breach, a three mana sorcery that says destroy target artifact or enchantment. If its mana value is two or less, make a one one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. We also have pest summoning, a three mana sorcery that makes two 1-1 one, one black and green pests. And then finally, Environmental Sciences. This is a two mana sorcery that lets us search for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into our hand, and then shuffle, and then we gain two life. So one thing you may notice about these lessons is the vast majority of them, other than Mascot Exhibition, give us a little bit of a life gain buffer, which can be very nice. We also have a bit of a package here to deal with Blood Moon or other artifacts or enchantments, for example, with Containment Breach. We have environmental sciences to gain some life quickly and get a land drop for our upcoming turn against perhaps some red aggressive decks. I could see that being very useful. We also have mascot exhibition if we really want an additional big threat. And if we have the time to go looking, basic conjuration will hopefully help us find a primeval titan and put it into our hand. This list is originally based on a list by Young Melody, who top aided a, a modern challenge with. Learn Mulet is what they were calling it. I'm not sure what the name of this deck is going to be in final, but they claimed that Field Trip was overpowered. So here we are to try it out. There are a few differences between the list that I'm playing today and the list that Young Melody did well with here. And that includes the copies of Pact Negation and Spell Pierce that are in the sideboard here and the second Cavern as well. These are cards that we're not playing. Uh, instead, we're playing a couple copies of Tireless Tracker, and I'll, I'll show you when we jump back to the deck here. And they also were playing Arboreal Grazer over Sakura Tribe Scout, which I've chosen to play Scout instead. They also played zero copies of Crumbling Vestige, no second Valakut, one copy of Colony Garden that we're not playing, no second Fetchland. A couple of things that I wanted to change here, so let's go to the main deck and see what's different. So, of course, first of all, we are playing Tribe Scout over our Grazer here. I just prefer to have Tribe Scout. I think that it's going to be more impactful in the long run. And if we want to replace it with something else in games two and three, we can go with Overgrown Arch, a four mana zero four with Defender that taps to gain life, or you can pay two and sacrifice it to learn. Again, that's going to let us get a lesson from our sideboard or discard a card and draw a card. So not only is this going to be a 0-4 body that doesn't die to an attack plus a prowess trigger plus a lava dart, for example, like Arboreal Grazer would, instead it's going to require a little more commitment from our opponent to kill. And if it stays in play, we get to tap it to gain a life repeatedly, and that could be quite powerful. Uh, so we do play a couple copies of Overgrown Arch in the sideboard. Um, but in the main board, I wanted to play some scouts today. And then obviously... Crumbling Vestige is going to be a very powerful, not only turn one green source, but also a way to enable us to haste Titan a little more easily, especially without Amulet, uh, do a couple of interesting things along those lines. It's also a double land, quote unquote, if we have an Amulet in play, producing a mana and then tapping for a colorless as well, that can come up as a pseudo bounce land sort of technique. We also want access to the second Valakut here, as it's crucial to getting some of our Dryad kills. Say we were to resolve a Primeval Titan on turn 3, as would be the plan, with a Dryad in play. So like turn 1 Amulet, turn 2 Bounce Land, Dryad, any second land. Turn 3, 
Bounce Land, Bounce Land, Titan, then we need to be able to search for Vestige and Slayer Stronghold, and then on the attack, get double Valakut to send lethal damage up to our opponent. And that can't really be accomplished without two Valakuts, as uh, Vesuva cannot copy Valakut and Molten Pinnacle as both are entering the battlefield, because Valakut won't be in play. So we do need a second Valakut for that effect. Plus, just naturally having Valakuts is going to be good for our Dryads. So I did want a second copy of Valakut here, and I've cut the Colony Garden as I have been doing in the past, as it's just not the most impactful card to me. And we are also trimming one copy of Explore to make some additional room for some of these additional lands, like the, the Fesh Land, the um, Crumbling Vestige, those kinds of things. We're already playing four copies of Field Trip in addition to three copies of Explore. That could get a little clunky, so we'll see. There's only other one thing that I want to mention, which is we are playing two copies of Tireless Tracker and one copy of Force. These are some of the best cards, in my opinion, in the sideboard. And I wanted access to Tracker as additional threat in the control matchups and Force as an additional out to Blood Moon or other tricky permanents, but mainly for those Blood Moons that we might see. So yeah, that's all I've got to say about the main deck here. So let's go ahead and hop into match one here. I will see you guys there. All right, match one is underway. See if we can be on the play. Unfortunate. Playing against Pevin. Of course, they choose to play first. Ugh. And we see a hand that you all will know will be very tempting to me. Turn to Explore. This is a turn four Titan hand, thanks to Castle Garenbrig plus Explore. If we draw any ramp spell, it's fine as well. Like, we could. This, this hand gives us the room to play a turn three field trip if we draw it. But we also need to draw a Titan. We need to draw a Ramp Spell. I don't know. If we're playing it something a little slower, this could be all right. We have double Valkuts naturally, so a Dryad is also pretty welcome. Ugh, I really want to keep this. If we get Discard Spelled, not really that great. I think we can afford to mulligan here. The inner voice in me is saying, do not keep that hand. And now we have a hand that has an Amulet. It has that explore that we just bottomed, and a couple tribe scouts, but no green source, curiously. If our opponent's playing green, we can count on Vesuvaing our opponent's green source, which could be useful. We get a turn on the amulet as well. I don't know, it's pretty loose, but I'm going to try it, and we're going to ship one of these scouts, as they are looking a little redundant, especially if we can't find a green source quickly here, so. Our opponent plays island. Well, I don't know, maybe our opening hand with explore and all lands would have been fine, we'll see. I still think that that hand needed a lot to work out, so don't feel bad shipping that one back. We see Street Rake. All right, so perhaps we're playing against a Death Shadow deck. Oh, no, this is a Living End deck. We see Striped Riverwinder, Street Wraith, lots of Cycle Creatures. They force our Amulet as well. Well, this is probably not a good matchup, nor is this going to be a good game for us. <laughs> don't think our opponent has any green sources that we can rely on copying here. Yeah, I guess we're playing out this Talari West and passing it back. Our hand just got a lot worse, and our opponent's just going to living in a bunch of creatures into play and kill us. So, I suppose we could potentially transmute Talari West for a Bajuka Bog. Yeah, I, I don't know what we could possibly have for this hand to pan out here. <laughs> That's all right, though. Oh, hey, look, a green source. Might be a little too late here. Do we play out the bounce land instead? I don't think it really matters. Let's just copy the breeding pool. And if we want to pick up our Vesuva and then recopy it, we can do that. Of course, if we pay the life for our Vesuva breeding pool here, it'll still enter tapped. So there's no reason to do that. I mean, we could just lose two life because we feel like it. Our opponent's on lands and cycle creatures. Summoner's Pact. We can transmute for Bog, but we can't play it. I don't know if we have another choice, to be honest. If we explore, then we'll be able to have five mana and play into Summoner's Pact for a cast Titan this upcoming turn, but I feel like that'll be too little too late unless our opponent just doesn't have the Cascade spell. Like... We could explore and try to hit Bajuka Bog off the top, and maybe that gives us the best chance of actually winning, is to just have a Bog right here, right now. Unfortunately, if we 
float the mana, play Sanctuary, pick up Talario and transmute it, we won't have an additional land drop to play the bog that we would transmute for. So I kind of feel like we just have to explore here and hope to hit bog off the top. Let's go. No. At least we get to put our Tribe Scout into play as well, though. So we'll do that. And I guess we just play the Valcut, as next turn we can play Sun Home and Slam Titan anyways, so. More cycling. See if our opponent has the Cascade spell. Of course, they're just going to pass. If we put a Titan into play now, Field Trip. If we put a Titan into play now, they'll just living end us in response, and we'll gain nothing. So I think the play is going to be to put this Sanctuary into play and float some mana in response and pick up the Stellario S and transmute it. If our opponent isn't heads up and doesn't see the bog coming, then we can flash and bog at instant speed thanks to Tribe Scout, something that Grazer would not be able to do. So if they have a living in, they need to they need to do it now, basically. So at least we're not losing our Titan to the Living End. And then if they do Living End, we can flash in the Sun Home, pick up the Talari West, maybe transmute it, maybe not, I don't know, and then cast Field Trip. Oh, I think we are going for the Bajuka Bog. We'll see if our opponent does anything about it now. All right, Instant Speed Bog coming in clutch. No Field Trip this turn. Not attacking with this Tribe Scout. It's got other plans, for sure. I dare you to do this with an Arboreal Grazer. You just can't. Can't do it. Hello, Fountain. All right. Are we just slamming Titan? I mean, I think that would be the choice. The other thing I'm thinking is we could at some point in time, be able to play Bajuka Bog targeting them, and then flash in a Vesuva in response to them cascading into Living End, in order to guaranteedly get all these creatures out of the graveyard. If we wanted to set that up, we could just play the Bounce Land, but I think I'm more interested in casting the Titan here, so I guess we didn't have to play a land drop. I kind of forgot that Sanctuary taps for two. That's alright, that's alright. So, yeah, I guess we just leave the stronghold up here. Actually, before we before we commit to floating all this mana, let's let's cast the summoner's pack cuz it may not even resolve in which case let's just keep our mana up so we can potentially field trip and do something else. If they force our summoner's pack, then that'll be fine. We could bog them now. I don't hate that. I think I'm going to let's let the force resolve. We'll bog them now, since I don't think there's a way for them to have the living in here. And then we'll play Field Trip and do something, I guess. Not sure. Not sure what the best thing to do with Field Trip is. Probably just get the, the three mana one that lets us look at the top six cards. Try to find a Titan here. We could go for the Exhibition card. I don't think that's going to be wise, considering our opponent is playing a living in deck. Our opponent is just stopping here. They're thinking very heavily about this Tribe Scout activation. I wonder what they could have in response. There's no Simeon Spirit Guide anymore, so don't have to worry about them Spirit Guiding out, say, a Violent Outburst. This feels like the safest time to bog our opponent. It does let them cycle one or two things on our instep and then untap and cycle some more and then cast living in, but that's not really something we can do anything about. I think our field trip getting the conjuration out of the sideboard is going to be fine because we could still also find a, uh, a dryad to go with our natural val cut here. So there goes the graveyard. All right, we're going on the trip, guys. See what we can find. Boom. We get a basic force, too. Alright, opponent, you got a response? 
They're probably just reading it. They're like, field trip? What the heck? All right, let's get this basic force, of course. And I do think that it's going to be basic conjuration. I think that makes the most sense. And uh, we'll cast it. We get to gain three life. Value. Total value. We get a Azusa or a Tribe Scout. Uh, I think, I think we want Scout so we can do instant speed shenanigans. And we'll pass it back. With our mana currently, there's no way for us to have enough green in this turn to cast Tribe Scout in addition to the other things we cast. As we need a double green for the Conjuration, green for the Field Trip, and then... Did we play another green spell this turn? It's kind of strange. I actually don't know how we ended up out of green mana. Maybe I did overpay green mana by some amount. I don't know. Hey, Titan. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, if our opponent has Living End and some Cascade creatures, we can... Flash, and I guess we need to play the Sanctuary first and pick up the Vesuvia here, so let's do that before we do anything else. So we can flash in the Vesuvia as a copy of Bog. If we had double Tribe Scout in play, we wouldn't even need to play the Land Drop here. We would just, uh, you know, play Titan, and then if they had a response, we'd flash in the Bounce Land, pick up the Vesuvia, and then flash in the Vesuvia copy in Bog, and that would be that. I guess we would still lose our Titan. So we're probably setting up a Talari West here, just in case they do have a living end. I don't know, maybe we should just keep setting up Bajuka Bogs. I mean, they can't win if they if they can never get creatures into play. I suppose there would be a point where they would be able to let our Bog resolve, but then cycle in response to the living end in order to get a couple creatures in play. So we probably need to try to actually end the game at some point here. Pick up the Vesuva, of course. We'll tap a couple of these things right here. And we'll play our Titan. Leaving the white floating so we can stronghold our Titan if we so desire it. We'll search. I think we just have to set up Talari West here. And here we'll pick up a Sanctuary. So we have our blue and mana in play to be able to transmute. We'll go for the haste, and when our opponent goes for the living end, if there's any creatures, we'll bog them, and if there's not, then we'll just deal with it. They cycle. You got it. Cycle away, my friend. Cycle away. Oh, okay, they're bouncing our titan. Well, that's fine with me. More lands for us. No attacks. We already played land for turn, so we gotta hold up this tribe scout with our little fake bajuka bog here. We cast the brazen borrower, that's fine. Well, now the life that we gained from our basic conjuration is no longer a joke. It gives us an extra turn against this brazen borrower. Okay. Well. Yeah, let's just do the thing where we cast Primeval Titan, I suppose. For, I guess, 5, 6. There's no way for us to leave the transmuting mana open, so let's not even worry about it. Into play, Primeval Titan. Do your thing. I guess we could technically have left a blue floating and a white floating here and use green, green, instead of using both of these two. We would be forced to transmute immediately, but I don't think that would have been a problem, necessarily. I mean, clearly we're gonna search. What do you take me for? And, uh, let's just get Simic Growth Team. We don't have another Talari West to set up, sadly, so I guess... I don't think our opponent would be playing Counter Magic, like, Remand or something. Don't know for sure. 
We could also just get the garrison, which I don't hate at all. Let's get the garrison. We'll pick up the Talari West and the Bajuka Bog. Our Titan train is about to run out. All right, let's float some mana. Play a soccer tribe scout here. Tribe scout holding down the fort in a way that I don't think another card would have been able to. And we'll go ahead and haste our prime time over here. Get some attacking done. Unless they have another petty theft, I suppose. I do believe we still have a land to play for turn as well, so. Violent Outburst, alright. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, it probably would have been better to keep the Tribe Scout in hand so we would have another Tribe Scout going into the future. Do we want to just get rid of this Riverwinder? 5-5 five, five Hexproof is no joke. I think we do. I think we do. All right, living in resolves. And I guess we'll play Do we do we go ahead and Vesuva the bog just to get rid of Brazen Bar? I don't think so. I don't think so. Next turn we can transmute for Summoner's Pack, Summoner's Pack for Titan and just go ahead and do the thing. Probably will be interested in doing that. Dryad. We could also just play that. I think we're going to transmute. We'll get the Summoner's Pact. We will Pact for Titan and see if it resolves. I'm assuming we can play both Dryad and Titan this turn. Force. Sure. That's fine. We'll play a Dryad. I think we have Lethal on them, actually. Assuming their last card is not a Violent Outburst effect, which I'm not going to play around. I just want to get this game over with. Save targets upstairs. Always a yes. Always a yes. Always yield. Uh, another land drop. All right. We'll pick up the Vesuva, I guess. And we will haste our guy. Boom. Lethal damage. All right, then. <laughs> that works. Not the way I expected to win that game, but I will take it. For the sideboarding. I obviously don't expect our opponents to be playing Blood Moon with that horrendous mana base. We could want Tracker as an additional threat to put into play to force our opponent to living end us without actually losing a Titan to it, so I don't mind that idea. And I think that's about it. Field Trip could be seen as a little bit risky, considering we usually can't tap out for a 3-mana Sorcery and be alright unless we're about to cast Titan, like if we cast a Dryad or something, maybe. I don't know, though. Like, Field Trip also doesn't get anything relevant from our sideboard here. The best thing it gets is basic conjuration. I think as much as I hate it in this matchup, we should be trimming field trips and uh, run it back. Tribe Scout doing tons of work. We won that game thanks to solely Soccer Tribe Scout in many ways. Speak of the devil, we got a Tribe Scout hand and we have Explorer. You know that means I'm going to keep it, right? Whew. Turn one, one drop. Turn two, explore. Sign me up. And uh, I think we do just fetch shock for the breeding pool here. Life total is not under that much duress. And uh, we want to be able to transmute Tolari West. Probably for Bajukabog, if I'm being completely honest. Pass it back. Next turn, we'll play explore. Our opponent has to have the fear of the instant speed Bajukabog. They never know if we just have it in hand or not. See if they kill the Tribe Scout by some method. Petty theft. They bounce it. All right. 
Well, there is more where that came from. We'll explore, play the Garen Brig, play Tribe Scout. You know, the, the stuff. All the usual stuff. Pass it back. Resolve our spells while we have the ability. Hmm. So our opponent is holding up a violent outburst, and we don't have the bog, so that means not great things for us, but we'll try to power through it, I suppose. Just pick up the stronghold here, I suppose. We'll play a, a tribe scout, leaving a blue up. Our opponent might think we're on spell pierce. Oh man, we gotta get him with the spell pierce. No need to attack, obviously. If we had a second breeding pool, then top decking Talari OS would let us potentially transmute for Bog. Just hard cast Brazen Borrower, you got it. Well, at this point, there's nothing we can do if our opponent has living in anyway, so let's just go ahead and scout in a land and untap. Assume they let us. Interesting. Well, I guess we're supposed to cast a Titan here. It'll let us get Bajuka Bog into our hand. I, I, I went ahead and played out the second Tribe Scout again. I, I don't think I should have done that. I Not... A play pattern I'm used to against Living End. I have never played Tribe Scouts against Living End except for this moment, so there's that. See if they let us get Bajuka Bog in a bounce land. Seems like they will, so we'll get the correct bounce land being Simic Growth Chamber for the blue mana, and we'll go ahead and just bog our opponent right off the bat. And it went through. All right, well, I think our chances to win this game have just shot through the roof. Uh, let's play out, I guess, the Stronghold, and just pass it back. Probably not playing out any more lands, considering we do have Dryad to worry about. Dude, Instant Speed Bog is just destroying this matchup. We're lucky our opponent didn't have a Living End here. Or if they did, they should have just gone ahead and cast it, because now they'll never really be able to cast a Living End without just getting Insta Bogged. I suppose they could cast Living in literally right now, and we would just maybe put an A land drop and just let it resolve. But then their Living in would be just to get rid of our Primeval Titan. Evoking Ingature to destroy an artifact. Well, I mean, this does put a creature in their graveyard for Living in, I suppose. Who needs Amulet of Vigor? We, we don't even play that card. We'll take the damage. We can get a Radiant Fountain to gain some extra life against our opponent here. I think... Let's not even put in a land. Screw it. We don't need it. Do not need it. Second Valkut, actually, we will play, though. I, am, I, am I going to pack for a Dryad here? That plays really poorly into Living End, so I guess not. We'll swing. Yep. We'll get Talari West and... I guess just Blue Bounce Land. Sure. Pick up the T-West. Of course. They seem to take the damage. If they had a living in before, they would have cast it, right? To get rid of our Titan. And to get whatever it was, a Stripe Riverwinder and Street Wraith in play. So that indicates me that they don't have it. And they've only drawn one card between now and then. So I'm kind of tempted to go for the Dryad here. But it could be very wrong. I suppose once our Dryad is in play, we play a land. And then we have Tribe Scout to put Windswept in at instant speed. So it probably is correct to go for the Dryad. They could force our Summoner's Pact, I suppose. In which case, we can just transmute. Okay, they do force. That's fine. 
Uh, yeah, let's just run that one back. Transmute for Summoner's Pack. Leaving the green floating for a Dryad purposes. Summoner's Pack for Dryad. We'll float some mana, play a Dryad. And we win the game. Well, I thought this was going to be a very difficult to win matchup. And I think we did get somewhat lucky here. But Ensign Speed Bog. Look at Sakura Tribe Scout. That is definitely one reason to be playing Tribe Scout over Grazer if you're worried about specifically the living in matchup. I don't know if you are, but, um, well, we have successfully taught one of our opponents a valuable lesson. Yeah, let me know if you learned anything from this particular video, if you enjoyed it, got some information out of it. Like it, subscribe it, share it, do all the, all the stuff, and I will see you guys for the next match. Clearly, we learned something from this one. I mean, literally, we were able to get a basic conjuration. I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Red Face Menace, signing off.